Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, courtesy of Ozark Machine Gun, we have a very cool Baluster Molina pistol to take a look at. Now, the Baluster was an Argentine pistol developed in the 1930s. It looks very much like a 1911, it uses 1911 mags and barrels, but beyond that, it's not mechanically interchangeable. It has much more in common with the Star Pistols, and these were developed for Argentine military use, and in fact I have a whole separate video on the standard Baluster Molina, so if you're not familiar with it you should take a look at that. What we have here today is one of the British contract pistols that was purchased, as far as anyone can tell, for Special Operations Executive. So the deal with the British Baluster contract was that, as best anyone can tell, because there's very little original, there's like no original documentation on this, um, SOE was a highly secretive organization, uh, the deal is that approximately at the time of the Dunkirk evacuation the British government approached uh, Hafdasa, the company that manufactured these pistols, uh, with a request to purchase something like 10,000, between 8 and 10,000 of these pistols. Now, Argentina was a neutral country at that time, and wasn't really particularly hot to engage in international arms trade with a warring party, and it would take about two years to obtain the necessary government permissions for Hafdasa to actually fulfill this order. Now, Hafdasa, well, Argentina in general, had a critical shortage of raw materials. In fact, Hafdasa had been an automobile manufacturing company before the war, and during the war they had to actually shut down automobile production because they just didn't have the steel to do it. So what England did in order to uh, get this contract, in order to facilitate this, make it actually happen, was they actually provided the steel that was needed to make the pistols, it almost certainly was actually delivered by the United States as part of the Lend-Lease program, uh, and then apparently at least a part of the contract price was paid in steel as well. Uh, this gave the Argentine government more of a reason to accept the deal. Uh, the steel was something that they really needed for a lot of domestic production and was very useful to them. So uh, as a result the contract was originally arranged, again as best anyone can tell, about 1940. Production did not start until 1942. Now if you've seen my other video on the baluster you'll know that these started out as the baluster Rigaud, and then uh, were renamed to Baluster Molina. All of the British contract guns are Baluster Molina. Um, they also are all marked caliber 45, that would later change to caliber 11.25mm um, after the end of this production run. On the bottom of the magazine there is one additional mark. This is actually a stylized HA uh, in a diamond, and that stands that's for Puff Dasa. Uh, and that indicates that this is, in fact, an original Baluster magazine. These are interchangeable with standard 1911 magazines, so you'll often find them with non-original mags. Now the balusters are serialized on the, the side of the backstrap there. Uh, one of the differences between them and the 1911 is that that backstrap is integral to the frame, not a separate component. And the British pistols will fall in a range between about 10,000 and 21,000. Now it's interesting to note that the British order, well, the serial number range composes more guns than what the British actually received. Now it's really easy to distinguish the British contract guns because they were all marked with an additional serial number on the side of the frame. Uh, a B and then a four digit serial number, or up to four digits, and those would run uh, from one up to approximately 8,000, so this is one of the very last ones. These serial numbers are not all exactly sequential with the standard serial numbers that are down on the backstrap here. Uh, if you compare, and, and some people have done this, if you actually compare the difference between this serial number and this one, you'll find that approximately 25% of the serial number range did not go to the British, and those pistols are scattered basically at random throughout the production run. Uh, it's not entirely clear whether those are guns that were rejected by the British for some sort of quality issue, or if Hafdasa was manufacturing uh, pistols for the Argentine, uh, well for Argentine purchase, at the same time as the British ones, and perhaps they just didn't uh, you know, they were they were mixing them up. We'll send a couple hundred to the British, and then we'll send some uh, to, our, to the Argentine military. That's really not clear. Now, there are no other markings that the British put on these pistols at the time. However, this one, and many of the ones that you will find, are proofed. 
So this has a pair of British proof marks back here on the slide and frame, and then also a sort of standard British proofing mark on the barrel. And what that actually says, it's uh, an NP, that's a proof mark itself, and then the cartridge description here is 0.45 inch by 0 0.900 inch, that's the uh, that's the uh, cartridge case length, which is 0 0.90, which is uh, 23 millimeter, if I remember correctly. And then 7 tons uh, per square inch is the pressure. Now this style of proofing was introduced in England in 1955. What happened was when these pistols were originally purchased by the British, they were not given any special uh, markings. They were issued to SOE. There is some rumour that they were also issued to the 8th Army in North Africa, but that seems to be probably not the case. Uh, a lot of these pistols survived in beautiful original condition, like this one, and even with their original boxes. And a lot of those pistols were purchased up by Interarms in the 1950s and brought into the US to be sold on the surplus market. Well, when they were sold commercially, these were pistols that came out of British inventory having uh, never been issued, when they were sold commercially to Interarms they had to be proofed according to British proof law. So if you find one with these proof marks on it, it means that the pistol was sold commercially by Interarms. There are some out there that are more likely to be uh, World War II souvenir pistols that were actually issued. They are typically in much lesser condition, and they don't have any of those proof marks. So that's the state, uh, the state that the gun would have been in during World War II. The proofing only happened in the 1950s. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. These British contract balusters are floating around out there, but they're relatively scarce to find, and they're definitely one of the cool sub-variants of the Baluster, Baluster Molina. So a uh, big thanks to Ozark Machine Gun for providing this one on loan so that uh, you guys can take a look at it. If you find yourself in Missouri, definitely make a point to check out his rental range. They have a whole cool supply of interesting and historical machine guns you can try out there. Thanks for watching.